Hi, bull pups. At this momentous time in history, you'll notice that people are creating a lot more. They're writing music, they're drawing pictures, they're really expressing their feelings in art, and I love this. Well, I want to talk today about a man who helped change music into what it is today. His name is Arnold Schoenberg, and he started to use math and intellect rather than feelings to write his music. Hope you enjoy it. It's really fun. Math puzzles coming up. He is famous for what we call dodecaphony. Our fourth graders know something of dodeca. Dodeca means 12. And phony sounds like phonics. The phonics of a word is how it sounds. And so dodecaphony is 12 sounds or 12 notes. He decided he would use all of the notes possible. And it's like he went to second step. He was only going to use them one at a time until they had all been used and then he could rotate a note back around. He wouldn't ever use the same note twice in a row. So most of our melodies that we know are pretty stepwise. Da 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 and use several repeated notes in them. Nah, Schoenberg wanted to change up music, and that he did. He began a movement known as 12-tone music, dodecaphony, or serialism. Now, I'm going to show you how to make a serial piece of your own. It's very, very simple. So you will need a piece of paper and a pencil. Hi, friends. I give you what we all know to be just a regular piano keyboard. Middle C, right there. Now in the scales that we typically use, you've done these a million times, we sing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we use eight pitches. If we start on D, we have to start adding some of the blacks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? That's what we're used to. Arnold Schoenberg said, but wait, what about all the notes in between? C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, E sharp, and B. He said, well, what about all of those? Those notes are just as important. And so in the interest of being fair, he developed the 12-tone system where, yes, he might start on middle C, but then he would also use, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 12 notes before we come to our next C, which he wasn't going to repeat. And so this is where the 12 notes come from. You can start on any note. What you want to do is choose which of these notes you want to start on. And the easiest way to do it is write them down. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, a, A sharp, and B. I myself am going to write them on little slips of paper so that I can draw them out of a hat. We'll show you how we plug this in in a minute. So get out your piece of paper and a pencil and write those note names down. You can either write them on a separate slip of paper or you can just write them across the top of your page. You'll be using them quite a lot. All right, see you in just a second. Hi, bull pups. Behind me on the wall, I have a poster board that I have divided into 12 squares growing across, 12 rows of 12, and 12 columns of 12. Now this is where creating a 12-tone song really gets fun. Arnold Schoenberg made several rules up. Number one, in a single row, you may not use one of the notes more than once. So that's pretty easy to understand, okay? This top row, or the first
first row that you choose to make is called prime. I don't know why you chose that. It's a mathematical name. So you always know that the very first row that you choose is going to be what we call your prime. So I have just randomly written each note possible on a little slip of paper. And you can do this or you can just write them out across the top of your paper, cross them out and make sure that you don't use them again. All right, what's the first one that I draw? It is, I will turn around and put in my first square an F. It's probably a little small for you to see. That's okay. Now I have to put my F down because I can't use it anymore. The next one that I draw is a C. Regular good old middle C. There it goes. Next one is an A. The next one is a G sharp. Okay, so I just write them in, in whatever order that I draw them. E, my prime is very, very simple to come up with. Then a C sharp. Then an F sharp. A sharp. A B, a D sharp, a D, and a G. That's my last tag. So my prime row for my song is going to be F, C, A, G sharp, E, C sharp, F sharp, a sharp, B, D sharp, D, and G. But we can't have the same note next to each other, whether it be going up and down or side to side. Because when we get this all filled in, we're going to be able to play it not only left to right, row by row, we'll also be able to start at the bottom and play to the top and maybe turn and go back this way and go back that way, or we could start and go backwards from the bottom to the top, never repeating the same note in any of our rows. So this is kind of a musical Sudoku, only it's a little more complex because you're using all of the pitches possible on the piano. If we take our prime row and put it backwards, that is called retrograde. Retro, going backwards, back in time. That just means taking that row and going backwards. Hi, bull pups. Here we are again. You may have noticed a bit of a cut in the film. I'm trying to learn how to do this. I actually made a mistake. I forgot after I did my prime, row, which we decided is the top row, the next thing you're supposed to do is take it backwards and use that as the second row. That's usually what works. Retrograde is what we're doing. We're taking this G on the end and making it the first note in our second row. So instead of reading it left to right, a retrograde just means we're going backwards. So our second row in our piece would be G, D, D sharp, B, A sharp, F sharp, C sharp, E, G sharp, A, C, and F. So don't be put off by this big long retrograde word. Just think backwards, that's all it means. Our first row is called our prime, and when we play it backwards, it's called retrograde. That's what's fun about these pieces, is because you can play it upside down, backwards, round and around. So, I'll be going to play it next. Just a moment. Now keep in mind when I play this first two rows, this is just my prime, which is going left to right, 
and then my retrograde, which is taking the notes and bringing them backwards. Now, the notes aren't supposed to be next door to each other, usually, and they're not supposed to sound pretty. They're not supposed to be all to have a lot of repeated notes. Schoenberg said, nope, all of the notes are important. I don't want to center around a key and make one note more important than the others. So here is what it sounds like. My random prime that I drew from my cards, I started on an F. F, C, A, G sharp, E, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, B, D sharp, D, and G. That, it's mysterious. It doesn't sound bad, it's just not something we're used to. Schoenberg wanted to change music. He didn't want music to be predictable. And he certainly did not want anybody thinking that he used only feelings and emotions to make his music. He wanted to use logic and reason. So the retrograde of that line, that's my prime line going backwards, G, G, D, D sharp, B, A sharp, F sharp, C sharp, E, G sharp, A, C, and F. And so in a score for 12 tone notes, you'd have 144 notes, and it would be every single one used only one time not only in the rows that are go sideways, but in the rows that go up and down as well. If you do it really well, you should be able to play some of them diagonally without having notes next door to each other because he, what he didn't want is the same note repeated twice in the same line. He wanted all the notes to have a turn. It's sort of like being fair. It's like Schoenberg went to musical second step. He was very fair. He was very balanced. Every note got a turn before somebody got to go again. So I hope you have fun putting this together. Do this. See what kind of sound you can come up with. I can't wait to hear them. Have fun.